Hi there. Welcome to Geology 2530, Introduction to Field Methods. I'm a Dr. Uwe Richard Kackstetter. That's a mouthful, but students fondly call me Dr. K. So I welcome you to this course. And of course, since it's a field course, we're going to do a lot of things outdoors. How this is going to happen, we will show you a set of videos and then we'll meet in the field for five days to let you practice of what they're going to instruct you to do. But in the meantime, welcome to the course. Please watch all the instructional videos beforehand so you don't have any undue questions as the course progresses. It should be a lot of fun, a lot of outdoor activities, and we will tell you all the details here as the course moves forward. We um, need to look a little bit about field tools that a geologist should have and you should have in a possession as well as we progress with this course. So let's look at my handy backpack here and see what's in there. One of the field tools a geologist should have, you probably know, is a, is a rock hammer. And, um, There's one. Now you should get one. It should be a chisel point and it should be forged out of one piece. Don't get um, those you get at hardware stores where the, the head and the handle are two separate pieces. It should be one that is forged uh, out, of a, out of one piece. Uh, I think Ace Hardware sells those. Um, for this particular course, you may not need um, it yet uh, because we will have very little chance to collect. This is often what um, um, called the tool for, for geologists, um, uh, kind of a, a handy little beast. Uh, the other tool that most people don't uh, appreciate or see in geologists the other tool that is quite important for geologists is something you may not have heard about. It is a surveying transit or compass called the Brunton. Here I have one. Um, they are kind of expensive, but they are very spe specifically made for surveying and collecting data in geology out in the field. Something like that. And this course is basically about a lot using a Brunton in the field. Now, we don't expect you to purchase a really full-fledged Brunton, which will set you back quite a ways. We have a few of those um, for loaning during the day. However, there is a simplified student or light version for it that works quite adequately well. It's called the Brunton Geolite. We would like you to purchase one of those. You will need it not only for this class, but for other classes as well. So it's a purchase that goes over uh, several classes. We do not require a expensive textbook. Actually, the text material is given to you for free in this course. But this uh, Geolite Brunton, which sets you back about $80 about the price of a textbook, is something we want all of our students to have and learn how to operate. And this is what this course is really about. Um, this is, is the Geolite is new and it's the cheapest one. Geological survey instruments in the Brunton repertoire. They may be out in many places. The best place is probably getting it from Brunton directly. And uh, here is the link to their web purchase site and to that Brunton. Another tool you should have, it comes in quite handy, of course, is, um, and I carry this with me, is a trusted old hand lens, right? Um, that is another basic staple for field geologists. Uh, you should have one of those in your, in your repertoire that you bring to the field. 
And the another one that is important that basically concludes the basic stables for every geologist is of course your acid bottle. So you can test some of the rocks right away and be able to tell calcareous uh, materials from non-calcareous materials. Oh, by the way, another important staple for this course that no geologist should ever be found without is a field notebook. Now, uh, something about these field notebooks. They are specially made. They should be hardcover, and I like the bigger ones. I right dare. And they're made out of a special paper that is waterproof. So you can um, fall in a river if you want to with this book and your notes will not smudge. Now, uh, please avoid getting something like this as a notebook. These flimsy covered ones. Um, they are not acceptable. Um, uh, we will see as we progress with the class why that is the case. So you need a hard covered one. Now here's a good deal. For this class we will give you that basic field notebook version for free the first day of class when we meet together. So you get one of those this is the one you will keep with you at all times and this is the one you will be graded in. So I will pass out these notebooks. They're, they're yours. You put your name in it. They have you used to keep. But I will collect them at the end of the day and grade the day's activities. When we meet again I will give them back. You will see what um, what you need to work on. Most people have problems with uh, taking adequate and abundant notes in it um, and uh, you turn them in at the end of each field activity. Now by the end of the class I'll give them back. They are yours to keep for other classes you will have in this course. Now if you want to go ahead and buy a bigger one they, they have a little bit more room something like this. I like the bigger versions um, go ahead and do so. Uh, what I like about the bigger versions too, and you can do this with a small version by the way as well. I'll see if I can show this to you. Um, if there's something important that I would like to have with me in the field, for example, a map or so, I can glue it right in, I can cut it out and glue it in. Um, Here's another one, and see that one. Or a stratigraphic section. And here's what I did when I was on sabbatical and people gave me business cards, other geologists. I could glue those in the book right there and I have them for future reference. What you need to purchase, however, that comes with a book like this is some kind of a, a ruler and a protractor. Now I would like you to get a ruler protractor combination. I love these German ones. They are typically difficult to find in the United States, but they have a protractor, they have right angles, and they also of course have a scale on there. That will become important. They fit nicely in your notebook right there. You keep it with your notebook um, as you put them in and you can carry them around. Another good idea is you would have a little rubber band you put around to keep your notebook from falling open and getting crunched up in your, in your backpack. But you can also, that is a more likely version in the United States, purchase something like this um, that is uh, freely available. Um, you may need to um, go to various websites to order them so make sure you have those in time this is what you need to purchase and bring with you another thing that is necessary that you should have and should purchase is a clipboard something like that and this is one i made myself they are also available 
the reason why I made this one for myself is because um, it fits prints of aerial photos really nice and it's a little bigger but it is okay to get a generic version of it so when we hand out activity papers you can clip them in and they don't fly around and float away in the um, in the wind while you're doing this activity so you can keep your your notebook and these clipboard together uh, some students have put rubber bands around it so they can carry both of those with them into the field something else we want you to purchase um, there is a, a cheaper version of that that you can make yourself but that is a surveying tape something like that what's a surveying tape it's basically a very very large large tape measure this one goes out to 165 feet because you're going to be taking readings in in the field uh, it has one side here this is metric you can see that one and the other side is your feet and inches Uh, I think I bought this one at Harbor Freight. There is a cheaper version though um, that you can get. Make it yourself. Use a standard tape measure which you probably already have. If not, I would get one, something like this, like a 20 footer. And a rope and colorful electrician's tape. And what you do is you basically tape every foot or every five feet on that rope in a specific color a certain distance often feet distances are the most common things we will need in the field um, so you can craft your own making your own um, surveyor's tape as we go out and do our measurements now other things are almost a well da that you can should bring along you should always travel with some Ziploc bags. Uh, the reason is, what if you need to take a sample? Well, these Ziploc bags are great. You can put your sample in it and then you can, I should also have a few index cards or small cards where you can write on, place it inside the bag with your sample so you can then reference to it and it doesn't come off when you write on the outside often it gets smudged off and you cannot read it after you've been in the field for a while so put a little a little piece of paper in it that then gets kept together with your sample and you know what you have collected in the field over time um, you then Of course, write a reference number to that sample in your notebook so you can match the two uh, back and forth. It is important, of course, to have some writing equipment you can write into with your note into your notebook. They make special water resistant pens. I think the, the most common water resistant pen uh, is made by a company called Write in the Rain, R E. TE, I believe, right in the rain. Um, they are expensive, but hey, a trusted old mechanical pencil will serve the same purpose, and they are great and has an eraser on it. But you also should have a Sharpie where you can write on with those things. Okay, so what do you must have for this class um, to reiterate? A hand lens, you should get this on your own. An acid bottle, you should have it if you took Geology 1010 at Metro State, you have a hand lens and an acid bottle. Tell me if you need refills. You should have a tape measure, something like that. You should purchase a surveyor's tape, something like this. Um, you should have a notebook, you could purchase your own or we will give you a free copy at the beginning of the class. You need to purchase absolutely one of those protractor ruler combos. Uh, 
um, you should have a tape measure, right? The rock hammer would be good, even so it's more optional in this class, but you will need it. You will need it as we, as we go out into the field, a rock hammer is good to have. The one thing um, that you should have is also a clipboard that you bring with you in the field, as well as your Ziploc bags and writing utensils. That is all part of your outfit. Now something else I want you to get for a very special activity is, if you can, it's semi-optional, but it will make much life much easier, is something like this, a tiny, tiny tape measure. We use it for one exercise called a parallax, a parallax exercise, and these come in really, really handy to do that. Another thing that is essential, you must have, and everybody has one right now, you don't need to purchase it, is your cell phone. I want you to download some specific apps. Um, there are some geology apps. Actually, for this class, one app is specifically important. It's called Rock D. Uh, what is so cool about Rock D? Well, it gives you, first of all, your position in uh, longitude and latitude and your elevation, which is really, really cool. So you can cross-reference and cross-check um, where you are at. But it also gives you the rock formation you're standing on. Now, one warning about cell phones and cell phone apps. Cell phones are not waterproof. Most of them are, maybe the newer ones are. Um, that is one of the problems. The greatest problem is you run out of power. We have this on field trips all the time. Students complaining, do you have a charger? Is there a charger in the car? And as soon as we pull into camp, even before we put up tents, there's all these people vying for the few plugs that are available on the campground or is a generator on? Can we plug our cell phone? So this is one of my biggest gripe. Um, and if you're out in the boonies, the network may not be available. Uh, so many students uh, half I, I cannot get any data and the systems are only as good as you know what you what you see here now what do you do in the field if you need to log your position in a notebook if you have a cell phone and you can get the data like with rock D this is great but if you don't you need to have alternate means of recording your data and um, then you need to do it the good old-fashioned way. We used to uh, drive this road for 1.72 miles uh, and then hike due east. And with the compass, you can then do the distance of how far people have to hike in and hike out. Now, obviously, there is also some optional thing that you will collect over time. If you had mineralogy, you know you'll get the complete portable laboratory. I would put it together, I have mine right here, and bring it with me into the field as well. Another thing that's good to have is some kind of a reference book. Here is my mineralogy uh, testing book that I also carry. It fits nicely with the clipboard size so I have this reference book with me. But this is totally optional uh, as you put together your field backpack over time. I also carry some gloves. Um, they are really great if you have to pry open rocks or handle rough material. 
some of these um, these leather gloves makes life just a little easier um, and they um, they are also great when you go climbing or need to hold on to something I have those in my backpack a carrying loop for the rock hammer is actually really practical to have along a pair of binoculars as you see here um, is also great to have um, to survey things in a distance but wait, there's more. I am also carrying with me, it always comes in handy, a headlamp. Um, they are great for going camping overnight and also great for some service we are doing, especially if they have a built-in UV light. I also carry a UV light with me because it helps with tracking um, fluorescent minerals and sometimes when you go night exploration they can be really ha ha handy and of course you can bring all kinds of testing kit hardness testing kit I have my uh, specific gravity testing kit right there uh, like the one we have in mineralogy or even in 1010 my scale calibration weight uh, whatever I need for the field testing is right right in the bag but this is all optional um, various acid bottles and chemical testing bottles that can be in there um, some of the distilled water would not be a bad idea uh, to have it in the field if you need to test something against water and other equipment uh, that is needed for field testing again all of this is optional The rest that I showed you before is essential you should bring with you in the field.